Good evening. I'm Gary Lee Ogden, Superintendent of Groveport Madison Schools, and I'd like to welcome all of you to our 2022 State of the Schools celebration. Before getting into introductions, I want to thank our Groveport Madison High School Choir Director, Anna Winters, and our Symphonic Choir, who just performed. Um, we are so grateful for them. Performances like that are illustrations of our students' abilities and the critical role that our teachers have in helping bring forth their natural talents and hone in their skills so that we can have a positive impact on their lives. I also want to congratulate the Symphonic Choir who recently earned a superior rating at the OMEA District Choir Contest and they have now qualified for state and will be there April 29th and 30th. So please join me in thanking them and recognizing them. Immediately following um, my presentation, we will have our Dunlow Elementary School Kindergarten Choir to perform for us, and I have a soft spot in my heart because I was a kindergarten teacher and they are the funnest to watch. So I'm sure we'll enjoy that. So if you'll stick around, um, we'll get that treat. Tonight's event aims to share with you, our community, the events and accomplishments of the past year how we are confronting the challenges before us and our plans for the future. We do believe that this significant opportunity will help us engage our community and demonstrate our commitment to public transparency and accountability. In conjunction with the State of the Schools celebration, we are pleased to release our 2021 annual report. Because you are here tonight, you will be able to get one as you leave the auditorium but they will also be mailed in the next week to every resident in, Gran in Groveport. The State of the School celebration is also an opportunity to showcase our students' talents and skills through our annual art show. So in addition to our schools and departments who have set up displays tonight, you will have the opportunity to see the art projects that our students from kindergarten through high school have created, and they will be in the gym for everyone to see. And lastly, tonight's event is a way for us to celebrate our local partners. We cannot do this alone. And we have partnerships with so many, from the city and township governments to the GMHS Alumni Association, the Groveport Madison Kiwanis Club, Education is the Way Foundation, Groveport Youth Athletic Association, and many more. By working together, we can positively impact the children in our community and in our district. Before I get too far along, I want to introduce and thank our Board of Education members. They are seated in the front row and I'd like them to stand to be recognized. Board President Chris Snyder. <laughs> Vice President Latoya Dowdellberger. And board members, Seth Bauer, Libby Gray, and Kathleen Walsh. It is not an easy task to be a board member. Their role is to set direction and goals for the district and ensure accountability and transparency to the public. It is a lot of responsibility, and I can assure you they do not do the work for the small amount of pay that they receive. But what I most appreciate about them is that they do want what's best for our students and they have a tremendous respect for our staff and all of the work that they do. So please join me one more time in thanking them for their commitment and support. At this time, I'm pleased to introduce our district treasurer, Felicia Drummy. She has been with the school district for just over two years and has a, had a considerable impact during her time with us. I know she's excited to provide you with an overview of our financials and share some positive news. So please join me in welcoming Felicia Drummy. Thank you, Gary Lee. It is my pleasure to share an overview of the district's financial picture with you. Both Gary Lee and I agree that one of the most important responsibilities that we have is to be open and transparent in the operation of our schools. We believe in personal and professional integrity. We work diligently to effectively manage 
and account for the resources that you have provided to the school district through your tax dollars. In this first slide, I want to highlight various sources of revenue. As you can see, nearly 50% of our general fund revenue comes from the state of Ohio through state aid. Next, at 41.7% is revenue generated from local tax dollars. The remaining 8.7% comes from restricted state aid, miscellaneous sources, tuition paid through Ohio's school choice program, and interest earnings. Obviously, with interest rates so low right now, we're not making a fortune in that area, that's for sure. But that may be changing. You may have noticed in this chart that it doesn't reflect federal funds. Since we're focused on the operations of the school this evening, we're not showing the federal funds because those are not available for our general operations. These federal funds are categorical grants that are generally restricted and only allowed for certain uses, such as our Title I program. And please be sure that you pick up a free book at the table outside from the Title I program for yourself or someone you care about. Since I mentioned state funding as one of our most significant sources of revenue, I should also note that state lawmakers approved a new funding formula this past summer. That formula has some very positive changes for Groveport Madison schools. We will receive more funding to develop targeted curriculum, particularly in the areas of career technical programming, special ed, and social emotional programming. While the new state funding formula doesn't fix the over-reliance on property taxes, it, and it is only partially funded at, at present, it does fix some crucial problems in the previous funding formula. Knowing where the money comes from is important, but most likely you're probably interested in where it's spent. I have two slides to illustrate our spending for you in different representations. One of them is by operational area, or what we call function. In this view, you can see the largest percent, 64.3, was spent on direct classroom instruction. This is what is necessary for the teaching of students and supporting students. These expenses include our instructional staff, classroom aids, curriculum materials, curriculum software, and Chromebooks. Support services account for 31.4% of expenditures. This is also direct student support, such as guidance, health, psychological support, therapy services. Additional supports in this category include our operations of our facilities, transportation, instructional technology, administrative and fiscal support, maintenance. The combination of the last four categories equals 4.3% and that represents our contracted food service, extracurricular activities, miscellaneous charges, and facility improvements. So let's take a little different view. The second method of looking at expenses is by type, what we call object. Here you can see that, not surprisingly, Salary and wages at 43.6% make up the vast majority of our school district's operating expenses. This is actually to be expected since public schools are considered a service industry. Purchase services at 28.5% accounts for services that we purchase outside of the district, such as contracted transportation, electricity, natural gas, water, telephone, as well as other professional and technical services. Employee benefits equals 20.1% of expenses in this category. And one thing worth noting is that Groveport Madison Schools was recently selected as best in class 
through a national benchmark survey. This was conducted by Arthur J. Gallagher, and the awardees were chosen based on benefits offered for members as well as cost-saving measures for employers. You may or may not know the district moved to a self-funded insurance plan several years ago, and that reduced our administrative costs that generally went to the insurance provider. We are still able to provide high-quality insurance for our staff. Supplies, materials, and capital expenses account for the 3.7% and 4.1% categorized as other expenses. This includes things like the cost of insurance, our county auditor and treasurer collection fees for taxes, software licensing, and bank charges. Essentially, we have a lot of the same bills you have at home. With this last chart, I want to point out the great value that, as taxpayers, you are receiving for your investment. This is a representation of the real estate tax millage. As you can see, Groveport Madison resident agricultural millage rates are the second lowest of the 16 area metropolitan school districts. Many of our other metropolitan school districts have a far more substantial commercial and industrial tax base than we do. So making a comparison there is really not applicable to this illustration. However, I think it is important to note that when our industrial and commercial taxpayers receive abatements, the businesses almost always hold the school district harmless by issuing us a payment in lieu of taxes to, to the district. But when it comes to what pres residents pay, only Hamilton Township taxpayers pay a lower millage. One of the most important aspects of my job is the twice annual preparation of the district's five-year forecast. The forecast provides an overview of where our revenue, how much we have, where it's going, what we get from the state, and many other sources. Based on state funding projections, local tax levies, and investment earnings, the district appears to be in very strong financial position through 2023. With the 2019 five-year operating levy set to expire in 2024, it will be necessary to renew that levy again so that the district can meet projected expenses that are necessary to maintain current programming. This renewal of the temporary operating levy is critical because it accounts for 16% of the local tax revenue. If not renewed, this would thrust our district into financial jeopardy. As I wrap up, I'd like to share some good news with you. There are two pieces of information. First, I'm proud to report that Groveport Madison Schools received the Auditor of State Award for a clean audit report for fiscal year 2020. <laughs> Thank you. This is quite an accomplishment, and it affirms that the district is accounting for its money according to generally accepted accounting principles, Ohio law, and most importantly, that we have solid financial controls in place. Secondly, the board has authorized me to take advantage of market conditions and our sound financial position to refinance the outstanding debt on this building and the debt on the district service center. At this time, we're also pursuing a credit rating upgrade. We believe we qualify for a credit rating upgrade to high quality, which will result in even more savings than we've shared with the refinancing. We've actually already realized savings of more than 800,000 from refinancing the district service center. And It's a double-edged sword. We're, we're hoping that the interest rates don't increase too much before we can complete the refinancing of this building. 
The earliest that we are legally allowed to pursue this is May, and our goal is to maximize the savings for you as taxpayers. We'll keep you informed and as we get results from the credit review. In closing, thank you for your time and attention. I hope I leave you with the insurance that we're doing an excellent job managing the resources that you've provided to us. And I hope that you feel confident that we're looking for ways to continue to save money while at the same time investing in the people and the programs and the services that ensure your children receive the best possible education. Thank you. Gary Lee, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Felicia. We appreciate your update. Um, you know, as I sit here and reflect, it was six days after our last State of the Schools event that the governor closed the state down in 2020 because of our COVID-19 outbreak. I don't think any of us could have predicted the outcomes and the profound impact that that was going to have on our lives and the realization that we would be dealing with that two years later. However, without reservation, I can tell you that we as a district were far better prepared than some other districts in the state because we already had computers in the hands of every single child, grades kindergarten through 12. We had the foundation in place to have remote instruction and a few days to provide training for our teachers and they were ready to go. Thank you, taxpayers. Your support of the renewal of the 2014 operating levy and foresight of previous administration and Board of Education members allowed us to be ready for all of our students to get to work. The benefits of remote online instruction are not comparable to the quality of teaching provided in a face-to-face -face format. I cannot imagine where our students would be today if they had not already had technology in their hands to continue learning in those circumstances. COVID-19 has turned our world upside down and each of us in this room has been impacted in some way. And to think just a year ago from right now, we had two thirds of our students in class two days a week and home three days a week receiving remote instruction and the other one third of our students chose Cruiser Digital Academy, a virtual classroom environment, five days a week. It seemed that almost every week last year, <clears throat> we received notifications of new public health directives from the federal and state government to regulate the operatings of our schools. And it is a true testament to the commitment and resilience of Cruisers. Our principals, teachers, support staff, parents, grandparents, family members, it took everybody, but we were able to adjust in changing conditions over the past year. Our custodians, our maintenance staff, lunchroom staff, aides, secretaries, nurses, teachers, coaches, principals, and technology techs, and district service center staff, every single one of our staff went above and beyond to put the needs of our students first, and for that I am humbly grateful and appreciate their demonstration of true cruiser spirit. As I said earlier, tonight is our way to celebrate our successes, and despite the dire circumstances that we were under last year, some really great things came to be. In 2020 and 2021, the federal government provided more than $120 billion to the nation's schools to help pre prepare and respond to COVID-19 and reopen schools across the United States. The program was part of the CARES Act that was funded through the Elementary and Secondary Relief Act, and we refer to that as ESSER. Through three separate allocations, our district received $29 million in federal stimulus money. And I can tell you, it has been a lifeline that has allowed us to combat the challenges put before us due to COVID-19. We have used these funds for several health-related and facility projects. The list includes everything from personal protective equipment to cleaning equipment, upgrading HVAC systems and bio and ultraviolet light filters, replacing water fountains and sinks with touchless devices, 
We've replaced and upgraded uh, technology in our classrooms, security equipment, monitor systems, and replaced some aging and leaky roofs. We've also used these funds to help create a summer program called Cruiser Connect, of which more than 1,000 students participated last summer, and we look forward to that again this year. We were also able to restart our before and after school care that many of our families needed. We are also able to provide after school tutoring for our elementary and middle school students. And we also use these funds to increase substitute teacher pay to help us in a staffing shortage when teachers were affected by COVID-19. These funds will need to be fully expended by September of 2024. What I've mentioned to you just covers a fraction of the things that we are doing. And we do have a website, um, a web page, I'm sorry, that shows you all of the things that we are doing with those federal monies to improve our schools and help us prevent and mitigate against COVID-19. Because of the impact of the pandemic, the state of Ohio did change our state report card last year. Um, the rankings for schools in the district did change. However, with that, the Ohio Department of Education did indicate for the 2021 school year that Groveport Madison Schools was rated as a moderate C district on the accountability system. Given these challenges, we are still pleased with this rating. However, we know there is still much work to do for our students and the learning losses that have occurred over the past two years. Some celebrations last year. 237 out of the 3,009 public schools in Ohio were recognized for integrating and implementing a positive behavior intervention support system. This aims to help implement social, emotional, and behavior supports to increase academic outcomes for our students. I am so proud to report that three of our elementary schools were of the 237 who received these awards. Groveport Elementary received a gold award rating Asbury Elementary received a silver award rating and Dunlow Elementary received a bronze. I wanna thank the principals of those schools and their staff and all of our schools who are implementing these programs to do positive things for our children. Next thing is meeting the needs of the whole child. Um, we really expect them to be successful learners, but know that we have to play a role in um, their nutritional needs to help fulfill them so that they can perform and be um, ready for school each day. At the start of the 2019-2020 school year, the district launched a universal free bre breakfast program where all students now receive breakfast at no cost as they arrive at school. The program was funded through a grant through the Children Hunger's Al Children's Hunger Alliance and meal reimbursement through the federal lunch program. When COVID-19 broke out, we were able to implement a grab and go free meal program where breakfast and lunch were provided to children at 11 sites across the district. Students and their uh, parents would be able to pick up meals and take them home while they had their classes remotely. We also worked with Groveport Madison Human Needs, who we are grateful to partner with, to provide meals throughout the summer for our children so that they had nutrition available to them. As a result of this work, Groveport Madison Schools was highly honored to be recognized by the Children's Hunger Alliance as their 2021 Breakfast and Beyond Superstar Award winner. We thank the Children's Hunger Alliance for this award and all of the staff members who worked tirelessly and the volunteers who helped feed our children. The safety and health of our students and staff is a top priority for us. The district does have safety plans in place and we have had them for several years. We have contracted with Safeguard Risk Solutions and they help define strategies to ensure safety to our children. We work closely with our partners from the City of Groveport and Madison Township Police, as well as Madison Township Fire Department to conduct drills and exercises, complete threat assessments, and refine our emergency operations plan. In addition to the district partners, um, in addition, I'm sorry, with the City of Groveport and Madison Township Police Departments, we each share a cost of, um, to place resource officers in our schools. They are based at Groveport Madison High School and also visit all of the schools in their jurisdictions. 
This is so important not only to ensure the safety, but more importantly, positive relationships between our police and our children. Last year, we installed a new state-of-the-art radio system that also allows us to significantly increase our communication with police and our staff. Shortly before the COVID-19 outbreak, the district worked with some of our community members to create a race relations, equity, and diversity committee. We call it our Code Red Committee. While we have developed the committee's mission, vision, and goals, COVID-19 did impact our ability to come together in engaging community. So we are excited to get back to business and um, let you all know that we are planning for a community call to action event that is planned for April 21st at 630 at our district service center. Our goal with that committee, we have three goals. One, to develop and sustain a culture in our school district where diversity is celebrated to cultivate a community embracing equality and creating opportunities for the community and the school district to dialogue together to build conversations about ongoing equity and diversity in our educational settings. The Code Red Committee will also sponsor a Celebration of Cultures Night in conjunction with our English as Second Language teachers. And this event will be at 5.30 on May 12th here at the high school. We will have food trucks from many different cultures and a program that begins at 6. We invite all of you to attend. So as I look around this room and I see how many people don't have seats, I will hurry. So you can get going, but being, it's a great topic, crowding. Um, as you know, we've covered this in the past and this is an issue that is on the horizon for us. I don't know if any of you saw in the Columbus Dispatch recently, I think it was Friday, a section that read area home construction hits a 17 year high. That article referenced the Columbus market, um, but it is affecting us. We have numerous homes and apartments being built in our own backyard. There are at least a dozen new apartments and housing develops under construction. And it seems like every time we drive around, there's a new one popping up. But here is our concern. For the 2022 school year, the school year we are currently in, we have reached our district's top enrollment, the highest we've ever had at 6,200 children. At present, our district's elementary schools are operating, four of them, are operating beyond functional capacity, and all three of our middle schools are beyond functional capacity. To temporarily accommodate the overcrowding, we have 12 double classroom modulars, which provide 24 additional classrooms to our schools. We know the problem. We are adding students every day, which we celebrate, but we are out of space. The solution is, we either have to renovate and expand our existing schools, build new schools, or a combination of both. However, even if we had a plan ready today and construction started tomorrow, it would be two years before we could enter a new school building. So realizing that we are in a near overcrowding crisis, the Board of Education has approved contracts with experts in school facility planning to help us update our master's facility plan. These companies will be completing assessments to our existing facilities, analyzing our enrollment and growth for the next 10 years, and engage the community in the process. We have confirmed with the Ohio Facilities Construction Commission that the district does still qualify for the state funds that will cover approximately 53% of the projects. It will take nearly a year to complete the planning process, but we will be working hard to involve parents, staff, students, and community members throughout the process. Please look on social media, look in your emails for those opportunities. They will begin this spring. The district will aggressively promote community forums designed to elicit feedback and ideas from our community. We will post information on our district's website Work on the new facilities plan, again, will begin this spring, but this is your school district as a community, and the plan has to serve your children, so this must be your plan, and we want to ensure that we will work with you to do that. As I wrap up, I want to focus on the most serious need of our children, the whole child. 
In January of 2022, the Brookings Institute released a study showing the COVID-19 impact on children and their achievement. And not surprisingly, English proficiency in math has dropped significantly nationwide since 2019. We have seen a drop as well. However, due to our, the work of our Cruiser Connect summer program and incredibly intense focus of our staff this year, we have witnessed academic growth in our informal assessments across the district. The January diagnostic assessment showed that on average, Groveport Madison students made more than 70% of growth towards their annual goals. So that's 70% at half year mark. So we're really proud of them. We anticipated this was going to happen with the loss, um, learning losses that occurred and implemented some programs through our federal funds that I had mentioned earlier, the ESSER COVID funds. We have instructional coaches now that are helping assist our teachers with database differentiated instruction and help close instructional gaps. We've also increased mental health support with mindfulness professional development for our staff and additional social workers to help support our families. There is so much work to be done, but we are confident that we are on the right path. Students have struggled emotionally and socially due to isolation and the dramatic changes of the pandemic. We've witnessed this for ourselves just this fall and the length of time that it took our students to get used to being back in school. We have also seen the impacts of the COVID, that COVID stress has manifested in our children and our staff anticipating this concern, we added three social workers this year and will add a fourth next year. The social workers and our counseling staff have provided tremendous support this year to our students and much needed resources and insight for our teachers and our school administrators. I am so very grateful to the Board of Education for recognizing the importance of our students' social emotional needs by authorizing the hiring of this, of this um, staff. Thank you. One last thing. In our, um, one of our newer partnerships that we are extremely excited about, um, if you, when you drove in, if you were able to see the Primary One Mobile Health Clinic in our driveway, we are partnering with Primary One Health. The district will use a $3 million grant that was awarded by the state and $7 million of our COVID stimulus funds to expand a district, ser our district service center and create a wellness center. The project will be a significant endeavor and will relocate our transportation office. The first phase of the project will be constructing the health center where students and community members, so anybody who lives in the area does not, you don't have to attend the district, can get health screenings, immunizations, physicals, primary care, comprehensive oral health and vision services. There's overwhelming evidence that a healthy child learns better and they are more likely to be attentive school learners when they are healthy. And we are so excited with our primary one partners to offer that opportunity. We are delighted and that will open of March next year. So we're hoping a year from now, we'll be able to celebrate the opening of the health center. However, there's a second phase of the project that will include adding behavioral health services, substance abuse disorder support, health education, and inclusion of services from Franklin County Jobs and Family Services. That will be the welcome center. We will relocate our enrollment office and add our social workers and other supports for families who are experiencing homelessness and need things for their children. We are excited for this opportunity as a community. As I bring this state of the schools to a close, I want you to know that earning your trust and respect and knowing that we are here for your children is so very important to me. I can promise you that every, nearly, nearly every decision we make and action we take is to help us build respect and trust with our parents, community officials, area businesses, our staff, and the greater Groveport Madison community. We promise to be honest, transparent in our decision making, and we will take responsibility when we make a mistake. 
because that's who I am. In closing, while we are certainly not without our challenges, we are here tonight to celebrate our children, many accomplishments that they've had and the talents that they, have, that they obtain, and the great work of our teachers, our support staff, and our administrators. So please join me for a few minutes of fun as our Dunlow Elementary Kindergarten Choir performs under the direction of Mrs. Lori Hitzman. Don't forget to take a stroll through the gymnasium to see our incredible artwork, and we are so grateful to our art teachers for the work that they've done. Also, we have some delectable temptations that are prepared for the, by the Eastland Fairfield Career Center's Culinary Arts Program. Thank you again, it was an honor to have you join us, and on behalf of the Board of Education and our schools, we wanna thank you and have a wonderful evening. Good evening. We are so excited to be here and give you a sampling of what we learn in kindergarten at Dunlow. We work hard to learn reading, math, social studies, science, music, art, and how to be our B-E-S-T what? We hope you enjoy our performance. Sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum! One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were four green speckled frogs. Glub, glub! Four green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum! One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were three green speckled frogs. Glub, glub. Three green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were two green speckled frogs. Glub, glub. Two green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there was one green speckled frog. Glub, glub. One green and speckled frog sat on the speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Some yum, delicious yum. Bugs. He jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were no green speckled frogs. That's it.
the whole globe in our hands. We've got the whole.